This is Ridgeway Tech. Hi guys, I'm Craig. And after building our latest contraption, the White Joker, I thought it was about time that we went in and showed you our BIOS settings to achieve that overclock of 4.2 GHz that I've told you about in previous videos. There's, the chip we're talking about is a, a 6-core Xeon from Intel. It's a X5650. And we've managed to take it from 2.6 to 4.2 GHz. And here's how we did it. So here we are on our with our overclock settings and I just thought I'd run you through them quick. We're just running at 800 megahertz on the GPU. We haven't overclocked the memory on the GPU but we've overclocked the CPU to 4.2 gigahertz more or less. I mean it's 4.18 but 4.2 for argument's sake and we're getting some pretty banging scores. So at this point I've done all my benchmarks so we just need to go in and have a look in the BIOS and have a look at what settings we've got in there and then we can set it all back to stock and I'm going to do a bunch of benchmarks at stock oh it's a gigabyte BIOS sorry it's a gigabyte board So we're just going to have a little look through our BIOS, see what's what. First off we're going to go into the motherboard intelligent tweaker and straight into the advanced frequency. And you see we've got our CPU clock ratio set to 20, that will turbo to 22 in the operating system. We've got our uh, advanced CPU core features, we've got all cores enabled, turbo enabled. Uh, most things enabled, we haven't got the some of the sleep states enabled but it's pretty much uh, the default uh, optimized settings and we've got our QPI clock ratio set to auto and our encore set to auto because that's just how it liked it it didn't much like it when we were trying to lower it so leave it on like that we've enabled our base clock so we can do some overclocking and we've up our base clock frequency to 190 so from 133 base to to 190 and we've got our XMP profile disabled so that we can set it ourselves and we've used a multiplier of 8 to get us close to the 1600 that it should run up so it's 1600 megahertz RAM and with the overclock we use a multiplier of 8 and it gives us 1520 which is pretty darn close and speaking of memory, go into the memory settings and we haven't messed about with anything here really we've just got uh, gone ahead and set it to 8 again like what like we did in the other menu, it's exactly the same thing we've got our import, uh, performance enhance uh, set to standard and you've also got turbo and extreme we found standard works well it also says standard's better uh, <clears throat> can improve stability and we found it to be rock solid so that's where we've where we put it. Uh, let's go into our advanced voltage settings. Uh, as you can see, we've upped our CPU V core to 1.3375 volts, which is perfectly safe. I don't like taking it over 1.35 on these. Uh, I think Intel say no more than 1.4, but I don't like going over 1.35. So 1.375 is 1.3375 is, uh, is a nice comfy place for me, it doesn't get too hot uh, and we've got that nice cooler on now but you start approaching 1.4 and, and these CPUs get very very hot and yeah we've left it, all the other settings are left at auto on there and our DRAM is the only other one we've got that set to 1.62 volts uh, as I say, that RAM 1600 megahertz with the XMP profile, it's supposed to be set to 1.65. Uh, some of the, uh, the lower settings, it will run at 1.5 volts, 
we're not quite running at 1600 but we've got quite tight timings and we're nearly 1600 so 1.62 is actually about where it ought to be and I'm very happy with uh, its performance at that, at that point. Miscellaneous settings, not much in there, just uh, virtualization technology, nothing really interesting. Uh, one little quirk when we go into the current status, yeah, uh, I've had it freeze a couple of times when I've been in there, so I, I just don't go in there. There's no settings to change, so uh, so there's no reason to go in there. And as you can see, there's our CPU temperature and some of our voltages and stuff. And we're running on a, a F3 BIOS. I did, uh, I did have a bit of bother with uh, one of the BIOSes. Didn't want to recognise the chip, so I ended up using the F2 BIOS. <laughs> then I uh, uh, ended up up in that to the F3 BIOS and everything's been really fine and stable go ahead and try out a different BIOS um, just beware I mean I've got other chips around I've got i7s and stuff and obviously with this being uh, 6 core Xeon uh, you don't want to update your BIOS to a newer BIOS and then find that the Xeon doesn't work in it and you don't have another chip to go ahead and flash it back to the BIOS that it does work with so as I say, it's a it's an enthusiast platform, so uh, not for noobs. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you those settings. There are some other miscellaneous settings, uh, time and date, you know, uh, hard disk boot priority, all the standard stuff. So all this stuff's pretty much just on its optimized defaults. Uh, go in and change to AHCI mode uh, to get better performance on an SSD. And that's really all the interesting stuff to show you. So then guys, there you have it. It's been a ton of fun overclocking on this system. We've been loving playing around with these old Xeon chips. I mean, six Intel cores running at 4.2 gigahertz. It's absolutely killing it in the benchmarks. Um, we're going to be having more fun coming up. We've got a, a dual socket board like this coming up with a pair of CPUs that are similar. So stay tuned for that one. So I hope you found this video enlightening and useful, perhaps. Uh, comment below if you've got anything to say about it. I'll read those comments and I'll get back to you. And we hope to see you in the next one.